chapter 12.1 and point 2, 12.1, 12.2, for uh, our math uh, th 264, Calc 2. Uh, so we're going to talk about three-dimensional space. Uh, so like my, my cave that I'm in here, um, we have really three variables. But we, it also comes from uh, problems where there's there's two input variables and they would yield one output variable. Uh, stuff like uh, uh, let's see, there'll be one in there on the wind chill. Wind chill uh, is what the air feels like based upon the temperature and the wind, and those two working in connect con, uh, connection give us what the wind chill is. But there's those two variables two input variables, wind is one and uh, the temperature is another, and where they intersect is then that gives us a temperature of what it feels like for our skin. Okay, so that's an example. Let's go ahead and move into our first section, and a lot of this is just going to be the, the basics um, as you go through the homework problems, and, and that's what took me a little bit longer. I wanted to go through each of the problems to see what we were facing, uh, because the uh, the PowerPoints aren't always uh, real clear for me um, exactly what they're what type of problems we're going to be facing so I, I have to see those first anyway so here's an example uh, of something where there's two variables here's household income Oops, I'm in the wrong place here maybe over here household income per year and then the, the quantity of beef bought so uh, an income in thousand say sixty thousand there is uh, let's see quantity of beef bought this is going to be how much beef is I guess consumed we'd have to read through all this which again um, we could but let's see this depends on how much money people have and on their price per beef, the consumption of beef in pounds per week per household is a function of household income, thousand and the price of beef. So this is the price of beef. As the price of beef goes up, obviously you would expect fewer, uh, less consumption, but also um, maybe, I don't know, uh, as income goes up, actually more consumption of beef. I guess beef must be expensive. If you don't have as much money, maybe you're buying chicken. Uh, I don't know. I don't eat beef. So, uh, but that's what's happening. We can, we can see here. So this is, you know, depending upon the fluctuation of price, depending upon the fluctuation of income, we get different uh, values for the amount of beef consumed by a household um, per week. Okay, so the example here, someone who's making 40000 a year, a family, uh, when, when beef is $3.50, we would expect that all those families are consuming on average about 4 pounds of beef per week, 4.05. Okay. Two input variables, one output variable, three dimensions. So we need a three-dimensional graph to represent this. A cylinder, the uh, you know one of the formulas for a cylinder is its volume, and it's really based on two separate things. It's uh, the come over here, the radius and the height. And as you vary those two as, as sort of as separate variables, we get the third, the output variable being volume. So it's the area of the base times the height. Uh, and that's why there's those two input variables yielding one output variable. Again, we, we do need a three-dimensional graph to represent this data. And then we see a formula here based on the two variables r squared and this would be obviously for the surface area so we've got the, the area of the top and the bottom that's why there's two the circles and the area of the side the sur circle the uh, surface area the side okay. 
three space. So if we've got the point one, two, three, we start at zero, zero. To graph it, we go one in the x direction. And from there, we go two in the y direction, just like we do on a two dimensional graph. And then we go up three in the z direction. And uh, you know, it's hard to do it on a flat piece of paper because we're, we're start trying to visualize it. And uh, our technology has not quite gotten there where we've got holograms where we could actually um, graph in three dimensions. Although, I guess that's what uh, virtual reality with those goggles are. You kind of see things in the three dimensions. Um, maybe you, one of you could vent a calculator that had that three-dimensional field there. Uh, we'd have to put on goggles, but it would work. And then um, I'm kind of in the way. Let's see, how do I have to move, move over here? But uh, 0, 0, negative 1. So we don't move in the x or the y. We just go straight down into z, and that's where that point would be. So a number of the problems that you're going to look at will be asking you about this, and you, ha you just have to visualize you've got this third field, and it's, it's hard to really tell you exactly how to do everything. Um, but that's what we can do in class. We can walk through a few of these together. And it's, it's training ourselves to visualize, um, to take that two-dimensional piece of paper and visualize it as being three dimensions is about the best we can do. Um, the calculators will graph three-dimensional uh, graphs, or there are some, some of the uh, calculators will do that. However, it's still a two-dimensional screen. So we've got to you, uh, still train ourselves. Anyway, uh, when we have three dimensions, what ends up happening is uh, what it, like uh, the z, uh, what's parallel when z is zero, what we get is uh, when you fix any value of z, you get uh, a plane. And when you make it zero, you get the xy plane. Um, if it was z was fixed at one, it would be that same plane. It would be parallel to that, but it would be the plane through z equals one. So we could, we could imagine um, an infinite number of parallel planes here to the z-axis uh, through the xy plane um, as we fix the value of z. If you fix the value of y, in this case, you get the zx plane. And again, as, as you were to change this, this is y equals 0. But if you made it y equals 1, then it would be uh, a parallel plane over one more. And finally, you have the zy plane when you fix the x value, you make x equal to something, like in this case x equals 0, we get the, the zy, the yz plane, I guess they call it the yz, um, when you let x be 0. And then again, if x was something else, you'd get a parallel plane along here. And um, it's, uh, you're looking at the problem, it's not necessarily standard what direction we put everything. I mean, this is x, y, z, z coming up. Um, where is the positive side of the x? It, it, we really need some labels here, Be, and the y and the z. Um, we might, you know, sometimes we kind of guess. But uh, one of the examples I, I looked at in the homework, it was kind of maybe backwards how I would have done it. But you, you just have to look which way is, is positive, which one is negative. Because they can move them around. Now, distance uh, formula. Just uh, you know, if we only had an x y plane, you know, uh, not you know, two dimensions. This is uh, x minus a squared plus y minus b squared. Hopefully, you you've used those before. So three dimensions just adds that third variable. Uh, so we have x y and z. You square them, and then it's that minus the points. So you know, your, your two points. This could be x1, x2, what, x2, x1, right? So the, the two x coordinates, two y coordinates, two z coordinates. You subtract them, square them. So a case like here. Yeah, let's, let's just look at this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the first x coordinate, negative 3, subtract the first x coordinate, and then we're going to square it. For the y coordinate, we take the second y coordinate. There's the one. This the first y coordinate goes is subtracted from it, one minus two, and then we square that. And to get the last one, we take this point, 
and then we subtract 1 from it, and then we square it. Since we're squaring it, we're all going, it does, the order we do it in, which one we choose as our first one, is really not important. Um, what will change is like, you know, 1 minus 2 is, is negative 1, uh, 2 minus 1 would have been positive 1. When we square it, they're going to get the same answer. So negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4 squared, that's going to be 16. Had we done it the other way around, negative 1 uh, would have been positive 1 minus a negative 3. It would have been a positive 4. Still is going to yield 16. Okay. So that's our examples there. And uh, that was really 12.1. So you'll see some, you get some practice with uh, locating points. Um, what does it look like? And again, uh, some of you will take to this fairly easily. Others of you, like me, will struggle with it a little bit. Um, but it's just trying to get that three-dimensional view in a, a two-dimensional world of a computer screen right here. Um, OK, so let's look at a few more concepts. And then we're, we're going to call it good. And then we'll look at some of those problems. So again, we've got two input variables and one output variable. So this is plotting the graph of a function. Uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to some value of z. And z could be, again, is, is some function. So this is a particular table of values for a particular situation. Um, and x squared plus y squared, so negative 3 squared, negative 3 squared, that gives us 9 plus 9 is 18. So z would be 18. Notice as you keep on with x being negative 3, you're changing the y. Or if you keep the y the same, you're changing the x. Uh, we get different z values. Okay, and then we want to plot this point. Let's see what we get. The, again, it will give us what the equation x squared plus y squared looks like. Okay, and what we get is sort of a, a, a three dimensional parabola, really, right? This would be like a x, you know, y equals x squared in the two dimensional world. We get this uh, parabolic shape. Um, and they just graph more and more points, and we get smoother and smoother. Um, and we look at it, and it, you know, it's sort of a, I guess, a three dimensional parabola. Now, I think they'll show us this on the next one. Um, here's a graph of e to the minus x squared plus y squared. Um, and anyway, it tells us it looks like this. So what it's telling us is um, there's that graph there. But I think where the important part is it, for the homework, where we don't look at this one on the homework. So that's why I'm, not, you know, I'm using some of these. But we do look at this. And um, this is going to be our radius x squared plus y squared equals the radius. So that's a, that's a circle, right? Actually, that's in two dimensions, uh, a circle around a point. Uh, in three dimensions, what that looks like is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals the radius squared. So if there's 36 here, then we'd say, oh, well, radius is 6. The other thing is, is um, just similar to this um, two-dimensional circle. Notice if it was, say, let's say we had it a center of the circle was at 3 comma 4, then the, our equation changes to x minus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared. That just moved it over. And let's say we had a radius of uh, 5 radius of 5, then that's going to be equal to 25, because that's 5 squared. Okay, Same thing for a three-dimensional. Uh, we're going to look at a, several three-dimensional. Of course, it's not a circle if it's three-dimensional. It's a sphere. So a sphere has, um, would be, you know, let's call it centered at 3, 4, 5. Why not? Make it just real easy. 
So if the center is here, um, we'll give it a radius of 7. Okay. So what would our equation look like? Well, it's going to be x minus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared plus z minus 5 squared all equals 49 7 squared right so that would be our equation now a lot of the problems in the uh, that you'll be facing they give you the equation and then you have to answer things about where's the center what is the radius or use those things to say um, one of the things it does is like um, what would be a plane parallel uh, to this circle say at uh, and parallel to the xz plane so that's going to be fixed on y so to be parallel to the xz plane has to be a y value well this is centered at four right what you have to do is you think oh the radius is seven so if it's at four and it's got a radius of seven it's going to be seven above that and seven below that so we're thinking of uh, again we're in th three dimensions but um, come back here wherever that point is since we're going to focus on the y coordinate of it we're at four we're going to be seven above and then again we have that sphere coming off and seven below and we've got a sphere coming off so um, we add seven and so this is going to be at y equals 11 and we go se uh, seven below so you subtract seven from four and you're going to get negative three so y equals negative three okay so that that should help anyway we got those two values and i think we're just about done here uh, cross sections uh, we don't do too much of this but yeah if you you know so if you've got a graph you can cut it with a cross section we're going to be doing more of this later uh, but not too much in the homework um, it cuts through and then we, we're gonna gonna try to visualize what that graph would look like so there's a few of those for you to do as well and um, yeah so I'm gonna post this uh, PowerPoint you can read through it if you'd like but it's just trying to visualize what's happening as we graph things in three dimensions. And it's going to be easier to talk through these than anything else. When one of the variables is missing, what we get is some kind of cylindrical thing. So um, if we have z equals x squared, notice there is no y squared. Y is not, um, you know, basically you've got zero y, zero times y. It's, it's, and so you get this sort of um, a parabola but not the three-dimensional one it's it's really well it's three dimensions but it's um, more a sheet that is at a parabola and when you fix like say the z uh, x squared plus y squared what you do is you get a cylinder number of circles okay I think that's about it that is so um, we'll keep these I'll post these and we'll work through some of these problems together tomorrow